It's a hell of a year, Graham. Unless you want everyone around you to pay for your sins. Take my deal. Yeah, you guys like the high-priced art world, but your true business is just a little dirtier, isn't it? No business is one big scam. So, all hail the new queen. The board has voted to appoint you CEO. You're never gonna give me a shot. You're a goddamn snake in the grass. You don't seriously think we're gonna let you control this place, do you? I won't be bullied. Let's get you in one of those big auction houses. Why do you want to work for me? Hunter hunts, a paint through paints. If you're back into smuggling, you're back on your ass. I went to the FBI. I want to do something good, tell them the truth. What kind of a deal did you make with them? You helped me bring down that terrorist funding asshole, Paul Rice. I give you your freedom. Always take care of your enemies. Isn't that what you taught me, Sam? Just wait till you find out what a good student I am. You put my little girl in jeopardy! You cannot kick me off the board. That was my career you ruined. I think you know why I hired you. You want me to be an accessory to fraud? You owe me this one, Graham. I'm done. If they find out, I'm trying to play him. Follow him. Hack his phone. Whatever you have to do. Anyone can lose everything. Just like that. So you made a few enemies. Congratulations. You don't want these people looking at you. They don't quit. You just never look brighter. This is your mess. Your mess. You're in this whether you like it or not. I will kill him. They have a lot of power. You're really messing with the way I like to do business for you. Guys, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having us. Great start to a great week. I'm just glad to be alive this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Present. Well, catch us up with your characters in season two. Well, uh, season two is, um, is about the other side of the characters of the art of more. Last year, everybody really wanted something so bad they were trying to get. And of course, nobody got what they wanted. And uh, this year, um, you, this season, you get to see the other side. It's really about I've got a secret, kind of, sort of. You, you see the, what is hidden behind the characters that uh, motivates yeah. them. Yeah, I think for, for my character, it's, it's, this season's more about uh, sort of trying to find redemption and absolution for everything that went wrong in season one and uh, uh, trying to sort of uh, absolve himself from, for, for his sins, really, for, for, yeah, for, for all the stuff that went wrong and make amends. And what about you, Kerry? Davenport has found himself in a situation where he's uh, starting to lose everything that he, that he had in season one. Uh, thanks to his father not paying taxes. And so now he's forced to find a, a way to survive and use his wits. And he sort of becomes like, he's, he takes a, a page from Graham's uh, uh, notebook in, in terms of survival and decides that he has to use his wits and sometimes some nefarious uh, behavior to, to win back his prestige and, and, uh, and, and his standing in the art community. Well, Chuck Rose, the creator of the show, said that at its core, the series is all about the nature of human desire, which it is, set in the art world. How do each of you view the show and why it's, it, it was such a big hit for Crackle? I, I think the show is delicious. Uh, that, that's my take on it. You get to see like rich people behaving badly and being miserable, really. Uh, and... Um, it's always fun to watch, and uh, <laughs> and I assume fun to play. Yes, very much fun to play. Playing a billionaire is very fun, uh, and um, you know I think that's the appeal to it, really. And it's it's not too serious yet. It's about something. It's about a world uh, I, that I've never seen on television. You know the the auction world, the art auction, and uh, it's. I think they're all they're all kind of trying to chasing these superficial things really that you know these desires and these these yeah these these, these superficial things in life you know to, to to sort of fill a deeper need uh, you know and, and of course it, it never works you know that you, you you chase money or, or fame or you know success in any sort of superficial way and ultimately you're just masking problems and I think you know that's what they're all doing to a certain degree. And what's your take, Carrie? Do you have anything to add? I can't. <clears throat> He's said it perfectly. That's exactly right. 
What drew each of you to the show initially? Because I know you'd never, you had done a series, but I mean, this is in a streaming format, so it's obviously very different from traditional television as we know it. I think this is the future of television streaming. I think that, um, you know, um, consumers want to be able to watch shows at their leisure when they want to, how they want to. And I think that's, that's what, why we're seeing such a uh, 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 promising, uh, uh, you know, uh, why we're seeing this, that streaming networks are now uh, so popular. I think that's why. It's nice to be able to watch it in bulk as well, right? I mean, I, I can't remember the last time I sort of rushed home to catch a program as it was broadcast. It's, it's just not the way, you know, you, you, it's nice to know that if you want to watch five episodes at once, you can, or if you want to watch two and spread it out, then it's, you know, it's up to you how you spread your time and how you spread the show out. And, and I think that, that is, as, as Kerry said, that's how television is being consumed now. And it's, it's, I think it's better it's better that way. Um, but I think, you know, I think we all were drawn to the show because, as Dennis said, it was a subject which hadn't been put on television before and it was a world which hadn't been uh, uh, shown. And, um, you know, the, there's a truth to it, you know, that the art world is this, uh, is an is a unregulated industry and there's, you know, there's, uh, there is as much drama in, in, in the real art world as there is in our show, you know, for sure. Yeah, I mean, you guys make art sexy, which is... <laughs> you make forgery sexy. Isn't it? Really? Yeah. No, until I watched it. How much did you guys know about the art world before signing on? Uh, not really a lot. Kerry knows quite a bit. I mean, he's been involved in it. But, you know, my, my character, Sam Bruckner, he's not really in the art world, and he's a billionaire real estate tycoon here in New York City. But, and, uh, Who has his initials all over yeah, everything. Who does that sound like? What's that? Who, who does it sound like? Has initials? A little bit, a little bit. But, uh, you know, he's basically, he, he's basically, he collects things. He collects, you know, art, people, and everything, and, you know, to kind of enhance his own ego and his own Sam Bruckner world. He must be so fun to play. He's a lot of fun to play. A billionaire is a lot of fun to play because you can just say shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So what are like the that. consequences? <laughs> you know, they're going to take you to the principal? Oh, well, I am the principal, you know? So. What is the dynamic on set like? Because the subject is pretty dark, and things get, I think this season, is really heavy. We try to keep it light, you know? What's so fun is I love working with these guys uh, and Kate. We have a really great rapport, and these guys, are, they're so professional, and they care about the work and their characters, and... And so it's a, it's a wonderful thing. You, you're very fortunate as an actor if you <clears throat> get a job where you're working with people that you admire and have fun with. You know, we, you know, we have to spend four months with each other, so. <laughs> it, it'd be terrible if we didn't get on, you know. <laughs> Plenty of people. <laughs> <laughs> four months in each other's pockets. <laughs> Dennis, when you first read the script, what about the show hit home with you? Um... For me, what I look for is uh, is a good story. That that's really the first thing I look for when I read a script. It's the only time I'm going to have to have a first time experience of the, of that. And um, I I loved it not only that I love the story of the script, but you know, for the entire season, they had a beginning and a middle and an end and a Bible there, and you know, it, it was going somewhere. You know, it wasn't just procedural, and um, it the yeah, the character was just really seemed like a, f a lot of fun to do, like I'd said, in a world I'd never seen. And um, then it was the people that were, were going to be involved. What's it like working with Kate Bosworth? It, she's amazing. Like her skin is like translucent or something. <laughs> she's like from another planet. She really is. You know, you think, oh well, they don't look like that. You really, when they wake up, yes, she does actually. <laughs> Hard to believe. For each of you guys, what's been the biggest challenge going from season one to season two, or has there been one? It's, in, it's, it's been pretty continuous, really. I mean, the story has just continued. We, you know, we carried on from exactly where we left off. Um, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, we've all had individual challenges with, with, with the characters and with trying to bring certain truth to, 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 to you know, to, to the characters, but... Um, I don't particularly think that 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 it it, was, it became any harder. For instance, um, it was just a continuation, really. You know. 
And Carrie, I think your character this season really goes to some very dark places. Very dark places. Very dark places. How did you channel that? Um, I just do. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I'm very fortunate in that, um, the, as Dennis says, the writing is great. And our, our, our creator of this show, Chuck Rose, really did create, as Dennis says, a Bible, and, and he knew these characters really well. Even though he's not from the art world, he absolutely understood these characters. So even though I grew up in the art world, I immediately knew this character. I, I'd met people like him, uh, and so he, I felt very comfortable in his shoes. So when I play a part and I feel I know the guy, um, it's a lot easier, whether he's in a dark place or a light place, whatever. I feel comfortable in, in that environment, yeah. And when you say that Chuck Rose created a Bible, he literally gave you guys, like, piles of backstory for each person? Yeah. Well, he, yeah, he had a rough outline of, you know, hypothetically, if the show were to run for five, six years, he, he, he had mapped out, you know, the broad strokes of that. Um, obviously, things change with, you know, the details change, and, and we all have our you know, two cents to say about it, about it or whatever. But yeah, he'd, 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 it was a fully researched, fully sort of developed Bible, you know. Yeah, and it had a, well, I, I also mean that it had an arc, you know, uh, had a, an arc for, the, you know, the season of season one. And then it also, you know, he had, a, he had it in his head about what season two was going to be. And, you know, it's because the medium that we're working in now, it's like you, it, it you, you have a two-hour movie where you, you tell the entire story, but, you know, hopefully you get, like, five seasons on a, on a, on a television show, and that's, you know, that's basically 50 hours of, uh, to, to tell a story, and ho hopefully you get that. And, but, um, you know, the best shows, the ones that have actually worked well, best, you know, uh, uh, on television have, have been that like for instance breaking bad or or eventually game of thrones i guess you know <laughs> <laughs> all things make sense or, or whatever but they you know if you go back to season one there, there's a through story that that's going on there that has a conclusion to it what are you guys binge watching or do you binge watch uh i'm making my way through the crown at the minute oh i hear that's really really good it's very good yeah. that's the word on the street yeah i i, I don't know I, I i guess i try and watch as much as i can yeah I'm watching um, Westworld right now. Another one? Yeah. You guys have good taste. What about you, Dennis? Uh, well, I, I really want to get to Westworld because it's, that's uh, very exciting. I remember the, sh the, the movie and stuff. Uh, and I'm just getting ready. To, but first, I got to watch Billy Bob and Goliath. I, I really want to see that. And, uh, you know, I've been traveling so much that... I, I take my Apple TV with me. I put it in the suitcase. Got it. Seriously? Yeah, I do. But then you get to the hotels. If you're staying in a hotel, you can't. They make it really hard. <laughs> Why? Why do they make it so hard? So you buy their pay-per-view. Hello. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's making money somewhere. It's always about the money. If you guys could have dinner with any artist, given that your show is about the art world, who would it be? Living or dead? Well, I'm looking forward to meeting Ed Ruscha. We, we actually <clears throat> used some of his art in, in the show this season. And uh, we're going to see him in a, in a few nights. So I'm looking forward to meeting him. I'm a huge admirer of his work. And uh, we're very fortunate to get him to be a part of the show. So. I've, uh, I've met Damien Hurst a few times. He's from my hometown. But it'd be, it'd be nice to actually sit down and have dinner with him and talk to him about, you know, he... They, you know, him and Tracy Emin and, and all, all the sort of those artists of the early mid '90s kind of created a whole movement, uh, you know, in contemporary art. So it'd be interesting to talk about the sort of anarchy and, and chaos that, that those guys created, and you know, just I think the, the early mid '90s in in Britain at the time was a very exciting place in pop culture in general. So it would would be good to have a, that conversation with him. Uh, you said living or dead. Yeah, anyone. I mean, Vincent Van Gogh. I would love to. And his brother Theo, as long as his brother's there. So, you know, something <laughs> kind of keep everything even. Oh, so there's even. no, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, he's my favorite artist and uh, really just, uh, I just feel so much from his work and, and his life, really. And um, 
Which is actually kind of perfect given the first episode of season two, right? Yeah. Very to very yeah. full, yeah. Circle. Circle. full circle. How has the art world responded? I mean, presumably very positively if there's so many artists are involved in the show. Yeah, I, I've not gotten a... a uh, I've not gotten to talk to Ed yet, but uh, I'm assuming he likes the show or else he wouldn't have signed on to do it. But I, I, I did speak to Shepard Ferry, uh, who's a friend of mine, and he loved the show. And he said, because uh, I was really nervous to see what he would think, obviously. And he texted me, I gave him a link to the show. He texted me back that night. He said, I binge watched the entire first season. I, I That's loved awesome. It, which is great. It's a nice thing to hear from Shepard. By the way, I, I love how casually you say that. Oh, Shepard Ferry is a friend of mine. That's, <laughs> as one does. Ouch, my foot. Name dropping. <laughs> Sorry. Do you guys remember your first big art purchase if, you, if you've made one? I bought a Matisse. Oh. Yes. I, I, I was actually. I come to dinner printed. at your house. It's a print. It's not a. It's not a painting. I don't have that kind of money. <laughs> uh, it's a print, but it's a lovely one, and it's in our bedroom, and it's uh, very pretty. Uh, Just move on to Dennis. I don't with my <laughs> with my with my 1980s money, uh, back then, <laughs> I I bought uh, a decouding. It's a. Can I come to dinner at your house? Once again, it's 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 not a major work. It's actually a, a um, kind of a, a it's a kind of a charcoal, and it's on it's actually on Big Chief note paper, uh, which I think I find very attractive, and I love. Nice it, so. choice. Was that like your first big investment? Yeah, it was my first. And you felt like you could really. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And let's turn it over to the audience. Hi guys, how are you? Hello. Hello. Um, I was wondering. What's your name? Michelle. Hi, Michelle. You guys are great. Like, this is so nice talking for you. Oh. Like, dude, this is. I'm. I'm having a moment. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, is there any roles that you've had previously that helped you get into character for this show, or is just like everyone a different learning experience? I don't think I've played any any anybody similar to Graham. Uh, I mean, obviously, you try. You know, you try and put. As much as of yourself into each character, I think is 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 it's what I always do. Um, so in that respect, but uh, no, I don't think I've played anyone similar. No. no I, I <clears throat> a lot of my characters, nobody's been like him, but uh, I know people like him. Uh, you know, maybe not as rich as him, maybe not this much of him, but I take from different people, and so he's kind of a agglomeration of. A lot of things. Um, I've never played anyone like Davenport before, which is why I was so excited to play him. Uh, yeah. Next question, please. Hi, Karen. Hey. Hey, gentlemen. Thank Hi, you what's your name? Michael. Hi, Michael. How you doing? This, is, this question is for you, Kerry. Uh, on, the, oh. mov on the movie Saw, how was that process like for you when you chopped off your foot and... I'm sorry, can you speak up? I'm sorry, uh, the movie Saw, the screen movie Saw? Yes. Yeah, uh, how, was that, how was that experience like for you when you chopped off your foot? And that, that, was, that, was, that was an intense scene. Okay. How, how was that process like for you when you were working with uh, Tobin Bell and all those other cast members? Sure. Um, it was a very short shoot. We shot the film in 18 days, and uh, we were only able to do that because we had basically one location where we were shooting. Because when you shoot a show, whether it's TV or film, producers get nervous about company moves. That's a location move. We have to pick up the whole production and move it to another part of the town. Because it's a big deal and it costs money to move and time. So if you happen to be in one location, producers get really excited about that because they know they've got the whole crew in one place and you can get a lot more work done. So we filmed in this old studio called Lacey Studios where they shot Cagney and Lacey. And it's an old disused mill, and it was very strange and dark, and it was haunted, and there was a cat with three legs and one eye in there. It was weird. But I was chained to a wall for the most, most of the time. And <laughs> what was funny is that <clears throat> Lee Wanell, who plays the other guy chained to the wall in the movie, there was only one guy with one key. And we would watch him <laughs> like a hawk everywhere he went. Because bath bathroom breaks had to be timed, obviously. And... Uh, it was challenging, uh, you know, um, they had to seal up the wall because James Wan, the director, wanted to be able to shoot a 180 shot. So the, what they would do is they'd chain us to the wall, 
and then they'd put the camera in the center of the room, and then about three or four crew would be there, the sound people and so on. And then the plasterers would be there as well, because they would then seal up the wall and paint it. And then we'd have to wait for the paint to dry <laughs> before shooting. So we were literally sealed in the room. That's how they got that up. That was three days of the shoot, wasn't it? Waiting for the paint to dry. <laughs> we'll be done by lunch, don't worry. <laughs> No, it was great. It was a fun show, and James is terrific. Obviously, he, you know, we knew what a great director he was, and that was his first movie, and now he's a you know, legendary. He's done. So you're saying that making that movie was as exciting as watching paint dry? <laughs> <laughs> Quite literally. <laughs> Very good, Dennis. Yeah. Next question, please. Hi, guys. Thank you for coming. Hi. What's um, your name? Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. Hi. Um, so, Carrie, you mentioned before um, the kind of dark places you took your character to, and this question is open for everyone. Um, did you find that uh, you worked better kind of on script, or did you improvise a lot for your characters? Um, like I said, the, the, the parts are very carefully written. Uh, we have a bunch of writers on, on staff and, uh, and our showrunner, of course. And, you know, we, we come, we rehearse. We find what is we feel is honest and truthful, and, and if there's something that, that sticks in our craw a little bit, we'll discuss it. Um, and that's what's so great about these guys, is that everybody's open to playing. These guys come to work, and they are ready to go. And, and so you just have to be on your game, and, and I love that. It's exciting. Um, I, tr I try and improvise a little bit in each scene, even if it, if it doesn't stay in, or even if it's just in a rehearsal or one take, just because I think it keeps things fresh and stops things becoming stale and keeps, keeps, keeps each other, you keep each other on your toes. You know, if you're, it's like a tennis match. If you, you know, you've got to be listening. So if you throw something at the other actor and you know, he looks at you like he doesn't know what you're talking about, then <laughs> you know they're not in the game. <laughs> so it's kind of, you know, I like to do that every now and again. Yeah, and you know, you said you know, the show is so well written. The writing is very good, but the, uh, besides improvisation and things like that, sometimes you know because it's they uh, another part is written that is uh, you know it's a new character or something. And you're doing doing it with somebody, and it the writing doesn't fit the actor that you're working with, or, or this, this. So the situation is different, or or sometimes you get out there and and something is playing differently. Or uh, realize that uh, you know the arc is, uh, of your character is going someplace else, uh, so we kind of change it up that way sometimes, you know, uh, or logic, or you know about a location. You get to a location is has nothing to do yeah. doesn't look like a location that you were that you were in before, and we'll you know change things like that up and be on the fly. Yeah. And last question, please. Hello, gentlemen. Hi. Adam. Is there a past character that each of you have played that what's you still your, your feel a connection with? My what, name is Afua. What's your name? Afua. Afua, lovely name. Thank you. Is there a past character that you still feel a connection with that you've played before? Oh, yeah. You want to elaborate? Well, it depends, uh, depends on the time of day or is it this or that. I still have a great affinity like for Gordo Cooper, who was an astronaut. Uh -huh. I still have my... Um, you know, one of the I still have my uh, flight jacket, and I learned to fly, you know, so it was a connection with him. And, you know, Jared Lee Lewis as well, because of uh, piano and music and stuff. You know, the, you know, those are the kind of characters that, that, well, I guess they were real people, but it, they don't have to be. But, you know, I, I get, I feel like I get given gifts because, uh, yeah, by some of the characters that I, I play because I, I learn things or... My life takes another direction, you know, in in, in life because of uh, some of them. I think as well, you spend so much time with a character, thinking about the character, you know, in the in the preparation of the film or the TV show, and then in the shooting of it, and and you know, even in, in doing press and watching it, or whatever. That that ultimately, you always, I think, you're always going to feel an affinity to the character, or you know, you you learn to understand how they would think or go about things, and so I think. You know, even if even if they're unlike you, you know, you you can understand uh, why they are the, the the people that they are. So I think they always stay close to you in that way. Yeah, I agree with Christian. I think you're you're connected to all the characters you play. Or at least I am, because that's why I did them. You know, um, they all are stuck in there somewhere right now. Uh, some more than others. You know. Um, 
Yeah, I, I, I love the characters I play. I, 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 whether they're, whether other people judge them, it's not for me to judge them. I, I never, I learned that from reading Olivier when I was a kid, that you should never judge the character you're playing because then you're forcing that opinion on the audience. So I always have an affinity with them one way or another, whether they're sociopaths or, or a nice, you know, a guy who happens to be a family man. It doesn't matter. Either way, I have a connection with them in some way. I have to find that, yeah. Well, conversely, what's been the one character that each of you has played that's been the toughest to shake off at the end of production? Uh, once again, Gordo Cooper, I guess, because I had so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> It was a nine-month shoot. That is, so yeah. that's, you know. That's intense. Christian? Uh, I, I did a, a World War II thing in, uh, in Israel, um, which was pretty much all based on truth, on history. And uh, we were sort of, I was working with some Palestinian actors that, that were literally retelling their own history, and it was very tough for them at the time. And they, they got very upset and emotional doing certain scenes. And it was, it was one of those moments where it was, you know, I realized I was a part of something far bigger than than I ever thought. You know, I, w I would be, and, and so going home at the end, every day to the hotel, and sort of, you know, it was just so tiresome. But 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 doing doing that was a real sort of that was that was difficult when you when you're dealing with you know real stories, real people. And Carrie, um, I tr I try to shake off the characters. Pretty, I, I, I when I go home, I kind of just. When I take my makeup off in the trailer and shed my my skin, my my costume, I kind of let them go because I I don't want to have them around me too much when I'm going home and going out. I just that's how I roll. <laughs> that makes sense. And when can we watch the new season? Wednesday. Tomorrow, right? Yeah. Tomorrow. When Wednesday. So Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday. On Crackle.com. Crackle.com. Go there. It's absolutely free. No subscription, nothing. Look, you watch it can on you any device that? you have, and you can download all uh, 10 episodes at once. Tell your friends. That's it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you.